This is Scott from Optics Realm. This is ZMAX tutorial number nine in my optics video blog series. Today I want to talk about how to model custom glasses within ZMAX and then show you exactly how to compute axial color for a singlet using those glasses we model. I've had a few requests from coworkers and on YouTube on how to model custom glasses that aren't in ZMAX. So we're going to cover that today. First glass I want to model is an older CDGM glass, H-ZLAF75. I don't think that formulation is available anymore. I had a coworker who needed to model it, so I wanted to take you through that. Let's just go to the glass catalog. Oh, here it is, NHG. I don't know what glass this is. This is also a... It might be the same glass, but I don't know. Let's re-enter it from scratch. We'll start with CDGM. We're just going to save so I don't corrupt. This is the CDGM glass catalog that ships with ZMAX. So we don't corrupt it. I'm going to save it as something else. We're going to call it CDGM underscore Scott. Uh, let's do OR for Optics Realm. We're going to add a new glass. Uh, insert glass. We're going to do H-ZLAF75. Going to find it on. So we're going to do CDGM H ZLAF 75. This particular glass formulation is not available on CDGM's website. I did find it on this refractiveindex.info. Here it is. And we could get index data or it's got the dispersion formula. Now let's talk about the dispersion formula a little bit. Let's just save this. And let's go to the ZMAX manual. And let's, I'm going to the ZMAX manual. Not only is it going to show you how, where to go to understand all these dialog boxes, but it's got the dispersion equations all nice and neatly packaged. And it's this chapter 23 using glass catalogs. I'm going to scroll down. ZMAX does not model a bunch of wavelength index, wavelength index. It actually models the dispersion formula, dispersion equation, which these equations have been developed over the centuries from glass manufacturers. They have fit their index data to a curve. Now the first one that comes up is this shot formulation. So you can see it's a formulation for index, really index squared, as a function of a bunch of coefficients, a, a0 through a5, versus wavelength, lambda squared, uh, 1 over lambda squared, 1 over lambda the fourth, on out to 1 over lambda to the eighth. This is the shot formulation. There's two Selmeyer formulations, three Selmeyer, four Sel five Selmeyer formulations, Hersberger, Conradi, and it just, the list goes on and on. Why are there so many equations and why does ZMAX enable you to do to use so many equations? The physics of dispersion, the, the physics of index of refraction versus wavelength is complicated and every glass formulation is slightly different and you want to have a very high fidelity model out to you know six or ten decimal places for how index varies with wavelength. The more fidelity you have there, the higher the fidelity your optical model. You don't want to go to two significant figures. 1.55 is not sufficient enough to understand and model your, your optical glass sufficiently. So here's the shot formulation. Now let's go back to this web page. And you can see it's the same. This is a shot formulation, n squared versus lambda squared, you know, bias term out to 1 over lambda to the eighth. We've got our coefficients. Now let's go to ZMAX and I'll show you how to just quickly enter that. Let's go back to our glass catalog and I'm going to enter H-ZLAF75 and it's in the CDGM.OpticsRealm catalog so let's use that. Okay, We're getting an error message. We'll talk about that later. Hopefully I can purposely have that error message. Here's the coefficients A0 through A5 and I think I can just copy and paste. Let's try that. Three, four. Let's see if this works. Save the catalog and reload. Okay, so it's coming up. Let's go back. Let's get the second term and see there's a negative sign. I've got to account for that. Oops. Enter that. I don't know. 
going to do e to the minus 2. I'm going to hit save again and reload. So something did not work right. Let's try it without the negative sign. Let's just add the negative sign out front, change e to the minus 2. Save, reload. So we're losing the e to the minus 2. I don't know what happened there. e to the minus 2. Save and reload. Okay, so now it's taking it. 155. Let's do the next one. This is also to the minus 2, I believe. E to the minus 2. Yep. Let's do the next one. I won't copy the coefficient just to keep it clean. Paste. This is e to the minus 4. e to the minus 4. Come on. Ooh, e to the minus 3. Okay, e to the minus 3. And this is a negative one. We'll have to remember this is a negative coefficient. And the co exponent is to the negative 5. Paste. We need a negative sign. And this is to the negative 5. Is that right? Five and negative five. This last one is also a negative five. It's a positive coefficient. Negative five. Save. Okay, and reload. Now we're not computing an index and an abe. I'm gonna hit exit and purposely get this error message. Wavelength 0.55. I've got one wavelength defined in my current lens, and it's 0.55. I'll verify that in a second. It's not within the valid range of the dispersion formula for HZLAF75. So let's go back, and indeed we're at 0.55. Let's select F, D, and C, 46, 587, 656, and it's going to give us these error messages. Let's fix that. Down here, on this dialog box, you've got a minimum wavelength and a maximum wavelength. Entering values in here are not going to change your index value at all. I could put minimum value um, an x-ray wavelength to a radio wave frequency and it's not going to vary, it's not going to change your index data. What this is doing, this is simply an error check. If, for instance, this these particular dispersion coefficients are fit over a wavelength range, you just want to make sure that you only model this glass over that wavelength range because outside this wavelength range the, the data is going to go nuts. Who knows what the curve fitting is doing. Let's figure out where this is fit. This looks like it's fit from 365 to 1 micron, roughly 1 micron. So I'm just going to simply enter those here. Three, I think these are in wave uh, microns. 365, 1.014. Oh, it doesn't matter. 014. I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit save. Okay, and I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna hit exit. I get no errors whatsoever. Let's just go back and verify. So we're saying that the index at the D light 587 1.903664. See, does that match? 190366. Okay, so that's matching. V sub D 31.32. V sub D 31.32. Okay, so this this is working out. This looks like we fit this sufficiently. So let's just hit exit. I'm going to design a singlet. Let's just quickly I'm going to quickly uh, design one. Oops, I'm going to need to put aperture, let's do entrance pupil, let's do an aperture of 10 millimeters. Oh, I need a back. <laughs> We're going to do a pickup, or a marginal ray. And in the merit function editor, I'm going to do focal length at wavelength 2. Let's just make this compact. So focal length at wavelength 2, we're going to give it, let's see, so we have a 10 millimeter aperture. Let's make it, uh, 
make it an F3. Give it a 30 millimeter focal length, a light weight of one. Control insert gives me the next line. I've got to invert, insert default merit function. Oops, DMFS. And then I have to, the last update of ZMAX, change what your default merit function is. It's not called default merit function anymore. It's called sequential merit function. I'm just going to do this rectangular array. All right. Right now we have a focal length of 60. Control, oh, no variables. I can't optimize. Exit. Let's let this vary. Control shift O. Optimize. Why is it not? Let's give it a so something is wrong. Let's do F5. Why am I not? No. Too low of a value. So 1e to the 3. I just kind of go nuts there. Drive it to the right focal length. Okay, 50. So we're we're roughly there. There's our foc there's our lens. It's an f5 lens with this HZLAF 75. And now I want to show you how to compute the axial color. In my optics tutorial number nine video blog, I showed you how I showed you all the formulation for that. Uh, let me pull that up. So here's here's slide 20. Bunch of equations, but essentially your change in focus from one extreme, in this case we're doing F to C. So the wavelength, the, the focus change from the one extreme wavelength to the other, it's a very simple formulation. It's the focal length divided by the Abe number. So let's just simply compute that. I might be able to access the Abe number in the merit function, but I don't know what that is. I'm going to just cheat. 31.3. So that's our Abe. We're going to call constant. 31.31.3, and then we're going to divide those to get the approximate axial defocus. Divide DIVI, uh, line 1, the focal length, divided by line 2. That's going to give us it in millimeters. I want it in um, microns, so product by PROB, line 3 by 1 e to the 3. And if I double click anywhere here, it'll update. It's saying saying uh, 1600 net 1600 micron axial color. Let's see what that says. So to find that, we go analysis, miscellaneous, chromatic focal shift, and it's showing indeed. So this is a plot. This is the focal shift in microns versus wavelength from 486 to 656. Down here, it's showing the maximum focal shift range, one point. Uh, roughly 1600 millimeters compared to the diffraction limit. So 1600 millimeters and we're computing roughly 1600 millimeters. It's off a little bit in the third decimal place but there's a lot of approximations that go on. Uh, for instance, lens thickness is going to affect this um, and it, you can see it's a little nonlinear. This isn't pure linear. There's, there's some curve there and that's because the dispersion the index versus wavelength isn't a purely linear function. So that's HZLAF75 and how to model it if you have the dispersion coefficients. Now what I'd like to do is let us assume that we've got the index data. We're going to do shot BK7 just because it's a staple. Here's the data sheet. should be a PDF. Here's all the data wavelength versus index and just to do something different we're actually going to do an index drop if you do glass molding if you've ever done glass molding it kind of anneals the material and your index of refraction is going to drop usually in the third decimal place somewhere just for something different we're going to include an index drop so here's excel i'll just do paste I want text so we've got, just to label it so we all know what's going on, La wavelength, and this appears to be in nanometers. Nanometers, and this is index BK7. And BK7, old habits die fast. I'm still used to just BK7 prior to rows. And ZMAX needs, let's just double check this. We're going to put 
let's check class data now what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit this index data that's this box down here and it appears yep yeah, wavelength needs to be in microns so let's do that wavelength in microns so this is in nanometers we're going to do copy this over we're going to do wavelength in microns 0181 and we're going to do BK7 mold so let's see we're going to equal this divided by 1 e to the 3 and then let's just drop let's assume the index drop is uniform over all wavelengths index drop let's just call it I don't know 0 0.0012345 just to be nuts there so that's going to equal this minus this constant term the 4 we'll copy it down okay so there's our data there's our new data it's essentially BK7 with a slight index drop I'm gonna copy this I'm going to go to a new notepad, paste, and let's just save it on the desktop. We'll do N, see here I did this already, in BK7 mold, we'll overwrite it. Okay, so there's our data. Okay, now before I load in all those index data, I think there's 20 data points here, I want to just try something interesting. Let's suppose that we've got, let's just try three wavelengths, right? So we've got that here, 486, 587, 656, 171615. I don't know where these came from. We're going to sh choose this shot formulation, and we're going to fit the index data. And it gives me an error message. Shot model needs at least six data points. And that makes sense, because the formulation has six unknowns. If you want to solve for six unknowns, you need at least six knowns. Um, and the more knowns you have, the higher the fidelity of your model. So you can't just do simply three data points. The more data, the better. So let's load this index data. It's on my desktop. NBK7 mold. Okay, so there it is. This appears to be right. Page down. 20 index values. So we're going to, let's just fit, let's just go to shot. Let's try another, another formulation. Let's try Hertz-Selmeyer, fit index data. So it's saying uh, an error, an RMS error out in the sixth decimal place and a max error in the fifth decimal place. Let's try shot. Let's see what it does. Okay, so shot isn't as good. The RMS is actually um, in the fifth. So this Selmeyer is fitting a little better. Let's do that. Okay. Add to catalog. Oops, new glass. I don't want to call it new glass. New glass. Where'd it go? Dang it. New glass. I didn't want new glass. Let's change it to N dash BK7 mold. And it's adjusted the minimum and maximum wavelengths. This is the Selmeyer. Everything looks copacetic save catalog alright so we're gonna do we're gonna exit we're gonna change this to n-bk7 mold and I'm just gonna re-optimize because because the index changes the focal length is gonna change there's our lens now we have to update for what the Abe is. Let's find out what that is. I'm going to cheat. It's just 6404. Exit 64.04. And let's double click to update. It's saying the for this molded BK7 with a 0 0.0012 index drop, it's going to have an axial defocus, an axial color, which is defocus versus wavelength of 780 microns. You know what? And we're going to cheat. We're going to make it a zero thickness lens. So it looks odd, but it's going to be a little more accurate. Let's refocus or uh, re-optimize. So we're exactly uh, 50, well, to two sig figs, 50. Let's see what this says. 780 versus what ZMAX is calculating, 776. So I've shown you how to 
model lenses if you have discrete index versus wavelength, or if you have the dispersion coefficients. And I've shown you how to model the how to get the axial defocus through Z-Max's chromatic focal shift analysis box. It's a mouthful. Homework is, I'd like you to repeat this. For entering data, just go repeat the h dash laf 75 And for computing the chromatic focal shift, I'd like you to repeat this exercise. This is an F5 lens. 50 millimeter focal length, but I want you to do it with SF2 uh, shot, N-SF2. Thanks for tuning in. Please subscribe to my channel. Tell your other uh, optics colleagues about me, and uh, please spread the word. Thanks for tuning in, and have a good day.